Hello, today we're going to talk about contemporary theories in psychology. These are the seven different approaches or the theories about why we do the things that we do. They are listed here for you in no particular order. And we're going to start with our buddy Sigmund Freud, who developed what we call today the psychodynamic approach. His theory is actually called the psychoanalytic theory and um, we'll get into the differences between those but for right now we're just going to call this the psychodynamic approach founded by Sigmund Freud he wrote um, the interpretation of dreams that's his most well-known work and uh, we'll get into why that's so important later Freud again with his infamous cigar and, um, he actually died of, of either mouth or throat cancer I, can't recall right the second uh, from all the cigars that he smoked but that's just a little tidbit of knowledge but he believed in the other psychodynamic theorists like Carl Jung, Alfred Adler, uh, Karen Horney they believe that unconscious motives are what drive our behavior we do things because we're unconsciously motivated uh, we have internal conflicts that we are not aware of and that our later behavior patterns are oftentimes uh, determined by the early experiences that we have that we have repressed into our unconscious minds that have created conflict. The second theory or approach is called the behaviorist approach. This is Ivan Pavlov's famous um, drooling dogs. Uh, he was a Russian physiologist and in 1900 he won the uh, Nobel Prize for his role of um, the conditioned reflex. He was actually studying, I'm sorry, the role of saliva in digestion and he actually discovered the conditioned reflex. Another behaviorist, uh, John Watson, uh, the first American psychologist, 1920, and he's the first person to actually test the conditioned reflex on humans, and he is known for the Little Albert study that we'll learn more about, but he basically conditioned a little um, boy, nine months old, to be afraid of anything white and furry just by um, using the ideas of the behaviorist approach and conditioning. Probably the most um, well-known in the field of psychology, um, most respected psychologist is B.F. Skinner. Uh, another American psychologist in the 1930s, he came up with the idea of reinforcement. It's another kind of conditioning that we'll understand uh, later on in, in the class. But for right now, just understand the idea of reinforcement, uh, rewards and punishments for our behaviors. This is one of the older pictures of him when, when he was um, getting close to his the end of his time here on earth but he believed that in order for psychology to be considered a science it needs to be limited to just observable measurable events and the belief with all behaviorists is that our environment determines our behavior so where the psychodynamic theorists believe that we do the things we do because of unconscious conflicts the behaviors believe we do the things we do because of the ways that we've been conditioned or rewarded and punished in the past or the ways that we've learned different behaviors. What happened is um, these first two approaches to psychology, the psychodynamic approach and the behaviorist approach, were extremely deterministic. They didn't believe that man had any control over his behaviors. He couldn't determine, he couldn't make his own rational choices. And psychologists later on um, started to reject this view and moved into some more, um, even more contemporary views other than these two. And the first of those is the humanistic approach, and this is the happy approach, if you will. So you've got a really nice, happy picture here of Abraham Maslow. Gotta love the little guy. And you may be familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, but he was um, coming up with his theory around the 1950s, another American psychologist. And this is sweet little old Carl Rogers, who um, also a humanist, but he's more well known for his um, therapy. Um, called person or client centered therapy where we do give the human all the control. We believe as humanists we believe that uh, we all have free will, that we can make our own rational choices, we have inherent goodness in us that we're striving to um, 
have come out of us. We're each unique and we have the capacity for choice, growth, and psychological health. So um, we have a lot of ability as humans to be good, rational beings who can make conscious choices for ourselves. We're not just determined by our environment or determined by our unconscious conflicts, things that we can't control. We are in control. The fourth approach is the cognitive approach, the Swiss psychologist Jean Piaget. He believed, and other cognitive theorists believe, that our thoughts and our mental processes um, determine the things that we do. We are cognitive, we're rational. The word cognitive actually means thinking. We have the ability to think, we have the ability to make conscious, rational choices, but the cognitive approach also is a reaction to that deterministic um, feeling that we had in, in the psychodynamic and the behaviorist approach. But what happened is we started to get more um, brain imaging technology, MRIs, CAT scans, things like that, that we were able to see what cognitive processes were taking place while decisions were being made and we realized, hey, we really do have some control over these things. The fifth approach is the biological approach. This one is extremely fact-based. Roger Sperry won the Nobel Prize in 1981 for his um, research on the split brain. He determined he was able to sever the corpus callosum, the, the um, band of fibers that separates the two hemispheres of the brain, and he was able to isolate those and determine what the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere both do. But the, the bottom line of the biological approach, the belief is that we um, are controlled by our biochemical and our neurological functionings, things that are happening, neurons that are firing, chemicals that are being released, and those different things cause our behavior. Number six, one of the newest approaches, the sociocultural approach. This came about with the civil rights movement, um, but just looking at cultural diversity and realizing that we do some of the things that we do as a result of the culture that we come from. Very simple. And finally, David Buss and the evolutionary approach, uh, looking at survival of the fittest and the evolution of species and natural selection is determining our behavior. So why do we do the things we do? Because of how we have evolved over time, um, back to Darwin and that sort of a thing. Those um, behaviors that, are, that have adapted over time are those that have remained with us. The timeline for you of when these things took place. Uh, you back here, structuralism and functionalism, way back at the very beginning of psychology, gestalt psychology, and then looking into more of the, um, you can see where the psychodynamic approach came in in the 1900, followed by behaviorism, the humanistic approach, cognitive psychology, etc. All right, I know I didn't give you any examples to go along with these. We'll, we'll do that in class, but I also want you to be ready to be able to um, apply some of these approaches to different examples that I give you in class. I hope you have a great day and I will see you soon.